Welcome to the introduction to Microsoft 365 Excel Formatting, Part 1 of 12 Parts, presented by the Fruitland Park Library, narrated by Gloria. Table of Contents, Part 1 of 12, Auto Save, Auto Recover, Grid Structure, Increase Column Width, Clipboard Group, Copy, Cut, Paste, Format Painter, Font Group, Font Style, Size, and Color, Fill Color and Borders, Alignment Group, Number Group, Quick Analysis, Dates, and Time. In order to work along with the tutorial, it may be necessary for you to have two open windows side by side. Slides 4, 5, and 6 explain how to maximize or restore down a window. Slide 7 suggests two other methods. Please see slides 4, 5, 6, and 7 before continuing with the tutorial. In the upper right corner, there is a Maximize Restore Down button. When the screen is maximized, it fills the entire screen. The Maximize Restore Down button changes to a single square when in the Restore Down mode. Restore Down reduces the window to half its size, as you see here. You can adjust the height and width by hovering the cursor on any of the four sides of the restored down window. The cursor will change from a normal arrow to an arrow with points at both ends. You can then resize the window by placing the cursor on the left or right side and holding down the left mouse button, then moving it to the left or right for width. Place the cursor on the top or the bottom and hold down the left mouse, then move it up and down for height. Place the cursor near the top of the Restore Down window. Hold down the left mouse button. Cursor will change to a two-pointed arrow. You can now move the window anywhere on the screen that you would like. Arrows are shown in red and blue only for demonstrational purposes. After adjusting the first window, open a second window and repeat the steps. The second window may overlap the first window as you see below. Use the same steps to adjust the height and the width and move the second window off the first. Both windows should now be side by side on your desktop. A second method is to use the minimize button, which will drop the window down to the taskbar. Using this method does require you to switch back and forth between the two windows. Just pause the video, minimize the open window, then click on the other window to open it up. The last suggestion is to take your laptop or smartphone to a library and use one of the library computers. Open the tutorial on a computer or smartphone and use the other to follow along with the tutorial. Microsoft 365 Excel. If you do not have a subscription to Office 365, there is a free online version. Please go to https colon forward slash forward slash www.microsoft.com forward slash en dash us forward slash microsoft dash 365 forward slash free dash office dash online dash for dash the dash web Excel opens to the backstage area. Please click on the blank workbook. Excel then opens on the Home tab by default. Autosave is a personal choice. It does automatically save your file every few seconds. If you're going to make changes, make sure you save a copy of the file before making any changes. It prevents Autosave from overriding the original file with the changes. If you do not use autosave and didn't make a copy prior to the changes, you can recover the previous version. At the top of the window, click on the file name. Click version history. Locate the file you wish to restore and click open version. It will open in a new window. Click restore. If you do choose to use autosave, Excel 365 has a toggle switch on the title bar for autosave. Click autosave to turn it on and this message will pop up telling you to upload the file. 
or to help protect your work from being lost if a crash occurs or it shuts down without saving happens, go to File, click on Options, select Save, set the auto recovery by selecting the number of minutes you wish your work to be automatically saved. Mine is set for four minutes. If there is a crash, I will only lose four minutes worth of work. Click OK. Each workbook can contain up to 255 spreadsheets. Each spreadsheet or worksheet contains over 1 million rows. There are over 16,000 columns in one worksheet. The worksheet below has not yet been named, so it's displaying the name of Book 1 and displaying Sheet 1. Each worksheet has a grid structure known as cells. Letters represent the columns, numbers represent the rows. Where the column and row intersect, it is called a cell reference. In this example, the cell reference is G13. Many things can be entered into a cell, dates, percentages, numbers, text, etc., and all can be formatted. On the Home tab, the first group is the Clipboard group. Note, a worksheet, also known as a spreadsheet, it is a single page of rows and columns which contain data. A workbook contains multiple pages of worksheets. When the data is too wide to fit the cell, you will get the number character. Place the cursor on the boundary line of the column and click twice. Excel will automatically widen the column to the width needed. Click off to clear the highlight. You can also change the width of a column by clicking and dragging the boundaries to the left or right. Home tab. It's easy to copy, cut, and paste using Excel. Highlight the cell or cells. Copy only one cell, there will be no highlight. More than one cell and the first cell will not be highlighted. Once copy or cut is clicked, the marching ants will appear around the selected cell or cells. Select the cell you wish to paste it into and click Paste. The copied cells will appear. Click on a blank area of the worksheet to clear the highlighting. Format Painter is a fast and easy way to copy formatting. Below we have formatted the data, header rows A1 to H1, and cell A8 is in bold. Cells A1 to H1 are center aligned. Highlight at least one of the formatting you wish to copy. Click Format Painter. Marching ants will appear around the selection and the cursor will turn into a paintbrush. Drag the paintbrush across the cells you want to format and the format style will be copied to those cells. When you click on Format Painter once, it will deactivate after being used one time. If you want to format more than one row or column with identical formatting, you must click Format Painter twice. The following example displays the double clicking of Format Painter using the bold command. Home tab font group, font style, bold, italic, underline, borders, Fill color, font color, decrease font size, increase font size. Formatting includes all of the commands displayed above. The font styles are listed from A to Y. Scroll down and find one you like. They can be changed at any time. Font size can easily be changed by clicking on the arrow and selecting a size. If you don't find a size in the list that you like, you can always enter your own size. In this example, the size is 11 points and is highlighted. You can highlight it whenever you want by dragging the cursor across the number. While it's highlighted, type in a number that is not in the dialog box. For example, 54 and 85 are not on the list. Fruit, 54 points. Fruit, 85 points. Changing the color of data is easy, but you need to make sure it's readable. In cell A7, the word bananas is unreadable because of the poor contrast between the white background and the shade of yellow. Change a row, column, a single cell, or partial areas of data. 
To change the color of the text, click on the font color command in the themes color dialog box will open. Click on the color of your choice. If you do not see a color you like, click on more colors and the colors dialog box will open revealing more colors. You can format a single cell, an entire row or column, or a partial row or column by selecting it. Format a row with color, click on fill color, and select a color. You can format individual cells using the same method. Select the cell, click on color fill, and select a color. For a selection of borders, highlight the cells you wish to add borders to, click the borders icon, and the borders dialog box will open. All borders were selected. Alignment, top, left, center, right, bottom, middle. By default, text always aligns on the left, numbers align on the right. You can change the alignment by highlighting the columns, rows, or cells. Then on the Home tab, Alignment Group, click on the alignment icon of your choice. Bottom and center alignment was used for this example. Home tab, Numbers Group. General is the default for Excel. It means no formatting will be applied. If you click on the arrow, a drop-down menu will be displayed. Select the type of formatting you need. For now, we are working with currency. Highlight column B from B2 to B8. Highlight D2 to D8 and E2 to E8. Click the arrow and select Currency. Formatting occurred automatically since column C quantity and column F quantity sold are not currency. They should not be included in the formatting. Another way to select formatting is to click the small arrow in the lower right corner of the Numbers group and this Format Cells dialog box will open. This dialog box not only allows you to select the type of formatting you need, but also alignment, font, border, fill, and protection. Click OK after your selection. Quick Analysis is another tool that can be used for formatting. Highlight the cell or cells you wish to format. Click on Quick Analysis. Dialog box opens. Select Formatting. Select Text. Enter the text you wish to format, click the arrow, and select a color. You can also conduct a search for the text you want by clicking the arrow and typing in the word or words. It is not uncommon to receive a worksheet with these odd numbers on it. Excel's calendar starts on January 1, 1900. Each of these numbers represent the number of days past January 1, 1900 is caused by incorrectly formatting the numbers. The data entry was made while the formatting of the cell was set to general. This mistake is an easy fix. Select the numbers. Change general format to short date or long date. Excel will automatically change the numbers. Select the cells. Click the arrow to open the dialog box. Select a unit of time and click OK. To save, click File. Click Save As. You will have to name the workbook or it will keep the default name of Book 1 until you rename it. This workbook is being saved on this PC on the desktop. Click Save. Or you could select Save on the Quick Access Toolbar. Save on the Quick Access Toolbar requires the same information. Name the workbook, select the location, click Save. If you attempt to close the workbook without saving, this message will pop up as a warning that you have not saved the workbook. Using Ctrl plus W shortcut will close the worksheet but not Excel or use the back arrow to return to the worksheet and add another sheet. To recover unsaved workbooks, click File, click Info, click Manage Workbook, click Recover Unsaved Workbooks. 
This will open a folder displaying any unsaved workbooks. Click the Open button to open the workbook. Rutland Park Library. This concludes the introduction to Microsoft 365 Excel formatting, Part 1 of 12 parts. Thank you for joining us for Part 1. We hope you enjoyed the tutorial and will be joining us for the remaining parts 2 through 12 of Microsoft Excel 365. If you have any questions or would like a transcript of this tutorial, please contact Gloria.Terry at MyLickLibrary.org or call 352-360-6561.